Hello world, welcome back to another Pico Gym challenge video. In this video, we're going to be solving static ain't always noise from the general skills category and it's worth 20 points. I apologize that this is already solved because I accidentally recorded an OBS but didn't realize that my mic wasn't being picked up by OBS so I have to re-record. But I'll try to recreate my reactions to how I solved it so that you can see kind of how I felt when or while I was solving it. So let's get started. Can you look at the data in this binary? Static? This bash script might help. All right, so we have two files. We'll go ahead and copy that. We'll go ahead and make our static and always noise directory. Go in there. Go ahead and wget that first file. And we'll go ahead and wget this other file. All right. Now, so we have a shell script and we have a static file. The static file is more than likely a ELF, right? So it's an executable Linux file. We could run strings on it, but let's go ahead and see what our shell script is doing, right? So we can go ahead and pop our shell script open in a in a text editor. We'll go ahead and run the, the ampersand means run in the background so we can still use our terminal, right? Because oftentimes when you launch a process, right, you're your terminal gets frozen up until you close that process, but adding the ampersand afterwards allows us to run it in the background. That way we can still have access to our terminal. We'll go ahead and open that. So here we have a shell script and it looks like it's doing an object dump of whatever argument we pass into the script. I'm guessing we're going to be passing in our static file into the script and it's going to output an object dump to a txt file and then down here it's going to say if okay essentially if there's an object dump file then it's going to print out that the disassembly was successful and that's what an object dump is it's basically a disassembly of an executable right which we'll we'll see in a moment when we actually run the script and then ripping strings from the binary with file offsets. Okay, so it's going to run strings on our file. So the flag is probably just in plain text in our static file. So we could potentially just run strings, right? Because that's all this script is doing. But we're going to go ahead and run the script on it anyway, so you can see what an object dump is as well. So let's go ahead and add the execute permission to our LTDS, LTDIS shell script. And that'll give us the ability to run it. So if we do now if we do and we pass it in pass in our static file right we should get some new files right yeah so we have a static strings file and we have a static x8464 file which is our object dump so let's go ahead and take a look at our object dump and as you can see these are all the assembly instructions right that make up the, the script essentially and this is just like the low level coding of what our script is doing right like these are the instructions that allow our static file to execute whatever it has in it right anyways we don't really know what the static file does we can we can actually we can actually see what the static files does if we just add a execute permission to it And it's basically say, oh, hi, wait, what? A flag? Yes, it's around here somewhere. So yeah, our flag is probably somewhere within the uh, the assembly code, right? Or our source code. So let's go ahead and take a look at our strings file that it popped out now, right? Since that's the next step, you know, once the once it successfully created our object dump, then it went ahead and extracted strings from it, right? So we could probably just do a control F on Pico CTF and there's our flag right there in plain text. So just for reference, right, in our, our redundancy sake, we can actually just go ahead and run string static grep Pico CTF, you know, our flag format on the static file too. Cause that's all that the shell script really did, right? It gave us an object dump so that basically as an introduction to what object dumps look like, right? 
Because oftentimes you'll need to disassemble, co disassemble code in order to find the flag that you're going to look for or to reverse, reverse engineer or binary exploit or whatever you're doing, right? And if we grep the flag, of course, there it is again. So that just comes to show you that, again, there's more than one way to solve the challenge, although this one kind of gave us the utilities we already needed to solve it. As long as you knew how to read this shell script and see what it was doing, you could basically determine the path to finding the flag. So we'll go ahead and put that in, even though I already solved it. Great, you have solved this challenge correctly again. All right, cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please drop a like, subscribe, and comment down below any your thoughts on the challenge or anything good or positive or negative that you dislike, liked or disliked about it. And I'll see you in the next one. This is Almond Milk signing out.